Hey y'all, it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. I think this is going to be the first video that I've had up in a while. I think if you don't follow me on Instagram, then you don't know. Um, my pup passed away. I do not want to talk about it at all. <laughs> but I just wanted to say that's why I've been gone. And I'm to the point where I'm not crying all day. So, and I'm trying to keep my mind busy by doing a bunch of stuff. So I thought I'd try doing YouTube again. See how it goes. I still have these spring, summer books that I haven't read that I want to read, a video that I'd wanted to do, and if I keep going, it'll be, summer will be over before I get it filmed, so I thought I'd do this video. And if I seem kind of, it's because of, it's kind of hard to be happy. First is Chirp by Kate Mesner. When Mia moves to Vermont the summer after seventh grade, she's ready for the change in scenery. Her arm still aches from when she broke it falling off the balance beam, and her heart still aches from a secret she'd rather forget. For now, there's plenty to keep Mia busy. Day camp, new friends, and time with her beloved grandmother. But Graham is convinced someone is trying to destroy her cricket farm. Could it be sabotage, or is Graham thinking impaired from the stroke she suffered months ago? Mia and her friends set out to investigate, but can they uncover the truth in time to save Graham's farm? And will that discovery empower Mia to confront the secret she's been hiding and find courage she never knew she had? So a mystery, a grandmother, a farm summer just sounds like a great read and caterpillar summer by jillian mcdunn and if in recent past videos if there was books that were like summer vibes i'm not going to bring them up again since i had recently talked about them cat knows her younger brother chicken better than anybody she knows that he loves sharks that he does not like loud noises tags in his shirt or being called henry ever since daddy died mom has had to work extra hard to keep their family afloat cat is proud to be the glue that holds their family together but sometimes, even the strongest glue struggles to hold. When a summer trip doesn't go according to plan, Cat and Chicken spend, must spend three weeks with grandparents they've never met in a place called Gingerbread Island. At first, she is very worried of these strangers. How could they ever know Chicken like she does? But life on the island is com comfortable, simpler, and Cat feels more like a kid than she has in a while. As she gets to know her grandparents, one thing is bothering Cat. Why haven't they been part of her life before now? Sounds like an important story, more grandparent illustrations. I'm going to go kind of fast because there's a lot more that I haven't read than I have. And I'll saying save duologies and series to last. Sisters of the Never Sea by Cynthia Rittich Smith. Lily and Wendy have been best friends since they became stepsisters, but now their parents are planning for the family to spend the summer apart. English-born, fanciful Wendy is going with her father to New York City. Sensible Lily, who's Muscogee Creek, is staying behind with her mother in the suburbs of Tulsa. And though they won't say it, both girls are fretting about what this change means for their family, especially for their little brother, Michael. Little do they know that a mysterious boy has been watching them from the tree outside their window. A boy who intends to take them away from home for good to an island of wild animals, fairies, and kidnapped children. To a sea of merfolk, pirates, and a giant crocodile. A boy who calls himself Peter Pan. So, of course, Peter Pan retelling. I'm very excited. It just sounds so amazing. Loteria, Loteria um, by Carla Ar Arnaz Valenti. So beautiful. And illustrations. The turn of a card could change your destiny. In the hottest hour of the hottest day of the year, a fateful wind blows into Os Osaka City. It whistles down cobbled streets and rustles the jacaranda trees before slipping into the window of an 11 year old girl named Clara. Unbeknownst to her, Clara has been marked for La Loteria. Life and death deal the Loteria cards but once a year, and the stakes could not be higher. Every card reveals a new twist in Clara's fate. A scorpion, an arrow, a blood red rose. And if life wins, Clara will live to a ripe old age. If death prevails, she'll flicker out like a candle. But Clara knows none of this. All she knows is that her young cousin, Esteban, has vanished, and she'll do whatever it takes to save him, traveling to the mythical kingdom of Las Posas, where every action has a price and every choice has consequences. And though it seems her fate is sealed, Clara just might have to do it, might have what it takes to shatter the game and choose a new path. Sounds great. Healer of the Water Monster by Brian Young. When Nathan goes to visit his grandma, Molly, at her mobile home on the Navajo Reservation, he knows he's in for a summer with no running water and no electricity. That's okay, though. He loves spending time with Nolly and with his Uncle Jet, though it's clear when Jet arrives that he brings his problems with him. One night, while lost in the nearby desert, Nathan finds something extraordinary. A holy being from the Navajo creation story, a water monster in need of help. Together, Nathan and the water monster named Pond must figure out how to cure the mysterious illness that plagues Pond. With the help of other Navajo holy beings, Nathan is determined to save his new friend and to help Uncle Jet heal from his own pain. It just sounds so unique and so great. And I love 
whole idea of this. The Secret Sunburn by Ally Standish. I think it's just called something else in hardback. Um, but it just sounds so great. All it says on the back is, and this is the cover, sorry. All it says on the back is, discovering an island of various secrets. Miranda and her mom used to be best friends, but now mom is acting like a stranger. So when Miranda is sent to spend the summer on August Isle, that's the name of it. Summer on August Isle, or it might be just called August Isle. On August Isle, where her mom grew up, she decides to find out what made mom change. But soon as she is tangled up in the island's web of mysteries, is Miranda brave enough to face the truth she might uncover? Sounds like a great summer mystery. The Underdogs by Sarah Hamill. Who killed Annabelle Harper? When popular teen beauty's body is discovered by the pool at an elite tennis club, the regulars are shocked, especially 12-year-old Evie and her best friend Chelsea. While everyone else is haunted by Annabelle's death, Evie and Chelsea jump on the case, dogging the footsteps of the lead detective as he investigates. As temperatures soar over the summer and tensions rise, fingers are pointed, and a heroic act sets in motion a ch chain of events readers will never see coming. Another great summer mystery. Willows vs. Wolverines by Allison Cherry. Izzy, Sofrentes, and her bestie Mackenzie have spent summers together at Camp Sweetwater since they were eight. So when their parents decide to shift them off to Camp Foxtail instead, the girls are completely out of their element and worse yet in different cabins. Izzy feels like an outsider in Willow Lodge, but when she hears about the time-honored prank war between the Willows and the Wolverines, the rival boy cabin, she sees a chance to make her mark. Izzy boasts that her older brother is the most respected prankster in the camp's history and would be happy to help them win the war. In reality, Izzy isn't, doesn't even have an older brother, but the Willows embrace her as their new secret weapon, and Mackenzie agrees to help hatch a series of epic stunts. As the hijinks escalate, so does Izzy's popularity. But she becomes so focused on impressing her new friends that she starts neglecting Mackenzie, which puts her friendship and her secret prank master identity into serious jeopardy. Can Izzy keep the truth under wraps and win her best friend back, or will she end up on the wrong side of her allies as well as her enemies? It sounds like such a great camp read. I'm so excited. I've had this forever. The one I've had forever. Just South of Home by Karen Strong. 12-year-old Sarah is finally in charge. At last, she can spend her summer months reading her favorite science books and bossing around her younger brother, Ellis, instead of being worked to the bone by their overly strict grandmother, Mrs. Green. But when their cousin, Janie, arrives for a visit, Sarah's plans are completely squashed. Janie has a knack for getting into trouble and asks Sarah to take her to Creek Church, a landmark of their small town that she heard was haunted. It's also off-limits. Janie's sticky fingers lead Sarah, Ellis, and his best friend, Jasper, to uncover a deep-seated part of the town's past. With a bit of luck, this foursome will heal the place they call home and the people within it they call family. Sounds like another great summer mystery. And some danger. Very important lessons. A Dog Friendly Town by Josephine Cameron. Epic McDade is not ready for middle school. Luckily, he's got all summer to prepare at his family's dog friendly hotel, the Peril Del Mar. And what a summer it will be. Carmelo, California has been named America's number one dog friendly town and puppies and owners alike are pouring into epic sleepy seaside neighborhood with for a week of celebration. Business is booming and the McDays are in dog heaven, especially Epic's little sister Elvis, whose favorite celebrity canine, Sir Bentley, is coming to stay. But when Bentley's jewel encrusted collar goes missing, missing, every guest becomes a suspect. And nobody knows the peril del mar like McDay kids. Epic will have to embrace new friends and new ideas to sniff out the culprit. Another summer mystery dogs so i don't know when i'll read this one but it sounds amazing storm makers by jennifer e smith beautiful cover beautiful illustration maybe it was only a storm but it certainly didn't feel that way the stars as an ordinary summer turns exciting and perilous for twins ruby and simon when strange occurrences begin happening on their farm sudden gusts of wind rainstorms and even tornado war warnings that seem eerily timed to simon's emotions then a stranger arrives and tells the twins that Simon is a storm maker, part of a clandestine group of people entrusted with controlling and taming the weather, and that he is in great danger. Soon Simon and Ruby must race against the clock as they try to master Simon's powers in time to stop a rogue storm maker's treacherous, potentially deadly plans. It sounds like such an exciting adventure and so different. The Summer of Moonlight Secrets by Danette Haworth. Welcome to the Merryweather, Florida's once grand hotel built on Hope Springs, where nothing is quite as it seems. Hidden staircases give way to shadowy servants' quarters, and old-fashioned speakeasies make for the perfect hide-and-seek spot. Allie Jo Jackson knows every nook and cranny of the Merryweather. She's lived there her whole life, and nothing surprises her until the first time she spots the beautiful Tara emerging from the water of the springs. Tara's shimmery skin, long flowing hair, and strange fondness for moonlight swims hint at a mysterious secret, and once Allie Jo and her friend Chase discover Tara's secret, nothing will ever be the same. 
Summer of a Thousand Pies by Margaret Dillard. And I'm also sure, I'm sure there's some that I've missed when I went through my search trying to find ones. So this is all the ones I did find. When Katie Bennett is sent to live with the aunt she didn't even know she had in the quaint mountain town of Julian, she isn't sure what to expect. Katie isn't used to stability after growing up homeless in San Diego with her dad. Now she's staying in her mother's old room, exploring the countryside filled with apple orchards, making friends, and working in Aunt Shell's own pie shop. And soon Katie starts to feel like she belongs. Then she finds out that Aunt Shell's shop is failing. Saving the business and protecting the first place she's ever really felt safe will take everything she's learned and the help of all her new friends. But are there some things even the perfect pie just can't fix? I love that. And there's a cat and baking and it just sounds great. Twitch by M.G. Leonard. Twitch has three pet chickens, four pigeons, swallows nesting in his bedroom, and a passion for bird watching. On the first day of summer holidays, he arrives at his secret hide to find police everywhere. A convicted robber has broken out of prison and is hiding in the edge of the wood. Can Twitch use his talents for bird watching in the hunt for the dangerous prisoner and find the missing loot? Sounds like a great adventure. Very excited. The Way to Impossible Island by Sophie Curtin. What was a girl from the Stone Age doing here now? This summer, Dara was finally going to have his big operation. Finally, he'd be able to row out to Latherin Island. Finally, he'd have adventures. But then the op is delayed, again. And Dara knows that for him, adventures will always be just silly dreams. Impossible. Then he meets Moth Girl. She's really impossible. She wears animal skins and has a pet wolf. And she's afraid. When she desperately tries to swim to the island alone in the dark, Dara has to let go of impossible and let adventure find him. That just sounds so different. I'm a wolf. Play my pup. So... Strong Like the Sea by Wendy S. Swore. Even though 12-year-old Alexis was born in Hawaii, she won't surf or swim with her friends, not since the ocean and its hidden creatures swept her out to sea. Instead, she grabs her best detective hat and decodes her mom's latest challenge. Alex's mom works in counterintelligence and leaves codes, ciphers, and puzzles behind for Alex to solve, always with a treasure at the end. It's a brilliant game between them, and Alex loves figuring out her mom's puzzles, especially the tricky ones. But when an emergency at sea puts her mom in possible danger, solving the next one suddenly feels far more urgent. Friends help as Alex races to decipher each clue before time runs out, but when the trail leads to grumpy old uncle, his enormous dog Sarge, and the sea turtle unlike any other, the challenges change into something bigger than any before. With storms on the horizon and lies on the line, Alex must face her fears to solve mom's challenge and save those she loves. With her ohana to help, she must be strong like the sea. Another mystery. Sounds very atmospheric. Summer of Stolen Secrets by Julie Sternberg. Katerina has never met her strict Jewish grandmother, but now with an opportunity to spend three weeks in Baton Rouge and away from her best friends turned bullies, Kat packs her bags and leaves New York City to get to know the woman who has always been a mystery. Down south, she begins working at her grandmother's luxury department store. Nothing seems to be going right and nobody talks about the past. But just when Kat is starting to think that this whole trip may have been a huge mistake, she stumbles on secret secrets from a time when grandmother refuses to speak of. Suddenly, Kat's summer and everything she thought she knew has changed. I like an important read. I love stories like this. I can't wait to read that. Halfway to Harmony by Barbara O'Connor. Walter Tipple is looking for adventure. He keeps having a dream that his big brother Tank appears before him and says, Let's you and me go see my world, little man. The Tank left for the army and never came home, and Walter doesn't know how to see the world without him. Then he meets Posey, the brash new girl from next door, and an eccentric man named Banjo, who's off on a bodacious adventure of his own. What follows is a summer of taking chances, becoming braver, and making friends. And maybe Walter can discover who wants to, he wants to be without the brother he always wanted to be like. Another important read. So. A Kind of Paradise by Amy Rebecca Tan. That is forever. Jamie Bunn made a mistake at the end of school year. A big one. And every kid in her middle school knows all about it. Now she has to spend her summer vacation volunteering at the local library as punishment. It may be boring, but at least she'll be able to hide from mean girl Trina, who's had it out for her since second grade and beautiful Trey, the boy at the root of her big mistake, or so she thinks. Not only does her job bring her face to face with both her mortal enemy and her ultimate crush, but Jamie also encounters a ter territorial patron, an elderly movie fanatic, a super tall painter who loves to bake, and a homeless dog. Over the course of the summer, as Jamie gets to know the library and the people in it, she finds and gives help where she least expects it, and she just might find herself along the way. Well, a good library story, and it sounds incredible. Seven. Where With Old Way by Samantha Ellen Bell. Celeste is having the worst summer ever. Her parents are off on an adventure and she's stuck at Grand's house with her annoying little sister Esme and strict instructions to be responsible. Or as Esme says, boring. So when their eccentric cousin, Bird, crash lands a flying bus in the yard, what choice does Celeste have but to follow 
preferred back home to seven wherewithal way. Wherewithal, for his house and the gateway to the many realms unreachable from earth, is bursting with magic and mystery and otherworldly creatures. It's Celeste's favorite place in any world, but when something tries to break in through the portal in the pantry, the door to the mystical realm of forest, Celeste learns that both Werewillow and her beloved cousin are under threat. If Celeste wants to save her cousin, their home is in heaven, and possibly even all the realms, she's going to have to find her adventurous side fast. I'm so excited about that one. That sounds so great. Second Sleep by Diane Stanley. Oh, beautiful. Mom won't be home for dinner tonight. Dad says it like it's nothing unusual, so Max and Rosie don't worry. But as the days pass with no word from their mom and ominous clues begin to emerge, the family starts to unravel. Enter their grandmother, Moselle, with a plan. She will take Max and Rosie upstate to the old log cabin where their mom spent her summers as a child, which sounds great until they learn that there's no electricity, cell service, or internet. This is the place where when it gets dark, you go to bed. Apparently, their mother loved it. She'd sleep till she was rested, go out to watch the stars for a while, then come back for a second sleep. That was the best part, those last few hours. That first night during their second sleep, Max and Rosie share an identical dream, the first of many. What follows and all they experience during their early morning second sleeps begins to change and challenge them. As Max slowly grasps what is really going on, he wonders if he might have found the key to the mystery of his mother's disappearance and how to bring her safely home. I'm just so intrigued by that. It just sounds so great. Happily for Now by Kelly Jones. It's illustrated. Fiona may have problems, but she's no damsel in distress. She'd rather be one, the one wielding the wand in the story. She wants to be the fairy godperson. So when her mom sends her off to spend the summer with a relative she's never even met in a place called Cold Hope, Fiona decides it's time to start training for the role. And why do these people need help? Aunt Becky's bakery is failing, great uncle Timothy draws but never speaks, and great aunt also is the gloomiest, doomiest woman she's ever met. Look out, Cold Hope. Fiona is going to shake things up. But helping people in the real world isn't as easy as it sounds in fairy tales. Change is messy. Advice can backfire. What if she's actually making things worse? What if Fiona is the one feeling shaken? Still with practice and some deep breaths, Fiona will discover that sometimes messy is okay. Sometimes things do get worse before they get better. And sometimes trying to help fix other people's problems can show you a way to work on your own. Sounds like such a heartwarming story. Mystery on Magno Magnolia, Magnolia Circle by Kate Kleiss. Small illustration step. On the first day of vacation, 10-year-old Ivy Croden falls down the stairs and breaks her leg. Stuck in a plaster cast, she's certain her summer is doomed. Not even Teddy, her neighbor and best friend, can cheer her up because he's dealing with his own pain. The loss of a beloved dog. But when Ivy witnesses a possible burglary from her living room window, her summer takes a sudden turn from meh to mysterious. Who are the criminals? Might a classmate be involved? And, uh-oh, a second mystery is nipping at Ivy's heels. Two of the best friends, the best dog, and the best chance that summer can be saved. Sounds like a great summer mystery. Great friend. Dogs, so I don't know when I'll read it, but it sounds great. Multiplying Mysteries of Mount 10 by Krista Van Dolgen. 12-year-old painter Esther can't wait to attend Cap Vermeer, the most prestigious art camp around. But when her stepdad accidentally drives up the wrong mountain as it starts to storm, she gets stuck at Camp Archimedes, a math camp. Determined to prove herself to the other campers, she tackles a brain teaser that should be impossible and solves it in a single day. But not everyone is happy about it. Someone wants her out of camp at any cost and starts leaving cryptic, threatening notes all over the grounds. Esther doesn't know who to trust. Will she find out who's responsible and who the next victim will be before something terrible happens? Sounds great. Puzzles, mystery, summer, camp, I guess. And then Maybe a Mermaid by Josephine Cameron, who also wrote Dog Friendly Town. 11-year-old Antoni Gillis is not the kind of kid who believes in fairies, unicorns, or even the word maybe. She's more of a comic books girl, so when her mom brings her to Thunder Lake for a summer at the showboat resort, she doesn't believe in local rumors about the Boulet Mermaid. Antoni has bigger fish, fish to fry. She's always wanted a true blue friend, but it's been hard to find one since for the past five years she's been bouncing from town to town helping her mother sell Beauty and the Bee cosmetic products to keep them both afloat. This summer will be different though. Antoni has a plan, a foolproof checklist for making lifelong friends. There won't be any maybes this time. But as she grows entangled in a local gossip, and as her mother stretches the truth, Antonia must decide if she'll, she'll stick to the plan like always, or dive into a summer full of extraordinary possibilities. Sounds like another heartwarming summer week. A Thousand Questions by Fadia Faruqi. Amy is not thrilled to be spending her summer in Karachi, Pakistan, with grandparents she's never met. Fortunately, she's a beautiful. she has a beautiful new journal where she can write about all her experiences, but secretly she plans to use it to write to her long absent father. On the other side of town, Sakina still hasn't told her parents that all she needs to be accepted to school is to improve her English test tour and figure out how her family could possibly afford to lose the money she earns working with her Abba in her rich family's kitchen. When the two girls first meet, they think they are way too different to ever be friends. 
As the summer goes on, Sakina and Mimi realize they each need each other to help get what they want most, and soon learn that they have plenty in common, including their kind hearts, big dreams, and all the right questions. It's like an important story. I'm very excited. Summer at Forsaken Lake by Michael D. Bell. And he wrote Shadowtail, Swallowtail, Swallowtail. Uh, mystery I read recently. Loved that book so much. So I'm going to muck this up because it was so good. 12 year old Nicholas Mendelssohn is not happy when he finds out he and his 10 year old twin sisters will be spending the summer in Ohio with their father's uncle whom they barely know. But after the long train ride from New York City, Nicholas finds small town life in Deming, Ohio hard to dislike. Uncle Nick and his dog Pistol are both great, and the tower room with its view of the lake is all his. Best of all, moored out front is a sailboat, Goblin, and Uncle Nick has already promised sailing lessons. Soon Nicholas has made a friend, Charlie, a girl whose curveball he can't come close to hitting and has become an expert sailor. But the excitement early starts when he and the twins discover a hidden compartment in the tower room that conceals an old reel of movie film, a notebook labeled The Seaweed Strangler, and a love letter from someone named Franny to their father written long ago. It's a mystery just begging to be solved. Add swimming, bike riding, an overnight sailing excursion that doesn't go quite as planned, and uh, his annoying sister jabbering of fake British accents, and it's a summer Nicholas will never forget. Sounds so good. The House That Lubit by May Rasushio. Lou Bolson Nelson is going to build her dream. She shares a room with her mom in her grandmother's house in San Francisco and longs for a place of her own where she can escape her lovable but large Filipino family. Her solution? A tiny house, 100 square feet all to herself, that she'll construct on land she inherited from her dad. Then Lou discovers that it's not so easy to build a house, not when her beautiful land may not be hers for much longer and her mom may want to move them out of state. But she won't give up on her dream and her friends and family won't give up either. It sounds so unique and like such a great, important story. The Kids of Summer Hill by Anne Marchog. It is spring 1945, a spring story. An orphan Nancy Kidd has a lot on her plate as head of the family. The cruelty men could send her and her siblings to the dreaded industrial schools. One other slice lives in the same tenement building and holds a grudge against the kids. More trouble is the last thing Nancy needs, but that's just what she gets when she tries to help a friend in need. Just as her life begins to unravel, she meets Carla, a Jewish refugee from Prague who might know a way out. Like such an important story. So intrigued. Historical fiction. The Memory Keeper by Jennifer Kamisha. All Lulu Carter wants is to be seen, but her parents are lost in their own worlds, and Lulu has learned the hard way that having something as rare as an HSAM memory won't make you popular in school. At least Lulu has Graham, who knows the truth about Lulu's memory and loves her all the more for it. But Graham has started becoming absent-minded, and the more lost she gets, the more she depends on Lulu, until Lulu realizes her memory holds the very key to fixing Graham's forgetfulness. Once Lulu learns that trauma can cause amnesia, all she needs to do to curb Graham is hunt down that one painful moment in Graham's life. With her friends Olivia and Max, Lulu digs into Graham's past, but they soon realize some secrets should stay buried, and Lulu wonders if she ever knew Graham at all. It's up to Lulu to uncover the truth before the only person who truly sees her slips away. Mystery, summer, a grandmother, friends. Sounds heartwarming and like important messages. An Occasionally Happy Family by Cliff Burke. Not only are he, his sister, and their nature-obsessed dad going to Big Bend, the least popular nat national park, but once there, the family will be camping. And Theo is a distinctly indoor animal. It doesn't help that this is the first vacation they're taking since mom passed away two years earlier. Once there, the family contends with 110 degree days, wild bears, and an annoying amateur ornithologist, <laughs> and his awful teenage vlogger son. Then Theo's dad hits him with a surprise. The whole trip was just a trick to introduce his secret new girlfriend. When it becomes clear that this isn't just any girlfriend, but a pretty serious auditioning to be his stepmom girlfriend, Theo must find a way to face his grief and talk to his dad before his family is forever changed. So, a little road trip, and then camping, and then trying to blend the family after the grief of losing a mom. Sounds like a imp impactful story. The Mending Summer by Allie Standish. There's a few Allie Standish books in my collection. The August Owl book was by her too, I think. Some summers are just meant to break your heart. Georgia can almost feel hers cracking a little more every day, like a clay pot left in a kiln too long. Her father is working nights, and often the man who comes home isn't daddy. He's a man who looks like daddy, but walks a little wobbly, who sounds like daddy, but sings a little too loud. With daddy sinking deeper into alcoholism and mama struggling to keep the family afloat, Georgia is sent to stay with her mysterious great aunt in her rambling old country house. Soon lonely Georgia meets Angela, a girl with secrets of her own, and together they discover a magical lake. At first, the lake offers Georgia a thrilling escape with her new friend, but as things grow worse at home, a troubled boy appears in the lake and the magic threatens to spiral out of control. So intrigued by that. Sounds like a 
emotional story and the alcoholism part. How to almost ruin your summer by turning selfish. Top three reasons Camp Menahaha is the worst. The spiders, way too many legs. King Arthur, a rampaging goat intent on my destruction. Victoria, AKA the diva, an evil cabin mate obsessed with French beauty products and my humiliation. If you can hear that, we prefer my husband. Chloe McCorkle knew, her, knew a summer camp where you had to learn career was a bad idea. She tried to tell her parents, but they just had to go on vacation to Alaska and ship her off to camp for two weeks. It's not ideal, but she's going to try to make the best of it. She might even learn some skills that would help her make money for the new bike she's been eyeing. But to do that, she'll need to survive an underwear eating goat, an invincible spider, and a camp director who's convinced Chloe's trouble. So intriguing. The sun will come out by Joanne Levy. Well, it says on the back, it's a letter. Dear Mom and Dad and Stevie, I guess. Camp Shalom is the worst. I would end with that, but they say my letter has to be more than one line. You already know Frankie bailed on me, so now I'm here all alone. There was this one girl I thought was nice and who loves musicals as much as I do, but then, oh, never mind. I got so stressed out that now I am covered in hives. The girls in my cabin are all making fun of me, but at least the infirmary is nice. It would be the perfect place to hide out all summer. There's a kid here. His name is Harry. He's very interesting. Anyway, I hope this letter is long enough. Thanks a lot for sending me to camp. S signed, your splotchy daughter B. Hooked already. Precious Bones by Micah Ashley Hollinger. Ten-year-old Bones lives with her parents on the edge of the magnificent Florida swamp. Her father, Nole, who is part Makosuki Indian, is wise, but he's also inquisitive and mischievous as a raccoon. A raccoon. Her mama is a practical as cornbread. With an assortment of animals, including Pearl, Bones get Bones' pet pig. The family lives in peace, peaceful, happy life. The summer of 1949 is drawing to an end. Bones and her best friend, Little Man, have spent most days fishing, hunting, and exploring the swamp. All is well until the day two Yankee real estate agents drive out to Bones' house and Nolay chases them away with a gun. Not long after, a huge storm blows through and Bones and Little Man discover something horrible out in Nolay's beloved swamp. Their small community is rocked by the news of two murders within two weeks. Wow. With evidence pointing toward Nolay Mounts, Bones' life begins to unravel. The thin third of hope her father will be found innocent is held in the hands of a bumbling Sheriff Leroy, who Bones thinks is as slow as pond water. Will the Sheriff come through? Is no lay and innocent? Bones is determined to take matters into her own hands, and if clearing her father's name requires a miracle, then America is what she will deliver. Full fiction and mystery. <sighs> kind of some dark themes, so up in the over. Map Maker and the Ghost by Sarvena Tosh. Goldenrod Warham loves nothing better than a good quest, so inspired by her heroes, Lois and Clark, she vows to spend the summer exploring and mapping the forest behind her home. Soon after she begins, her task is complicated by a series of rather unique events. A chance encounter with a strange old lady has her searching for a legendary, possibly world-saving blue rose, which incidentally lands her in the middle of a ragtag gang of brilliant troublemakers, whose plot to attain infamy and fortune will devastate the town of Pimbleton. But when Golden Round stumbles upon a real live ghost haunt in the forest, she knows this will be anything but an ordinary summer or an ordinary quest. So I'm intrigued by that. The Matchstick Castle by Clara Graff. Ryan can think of a few places he'd rather spend his summer than with his aunt and uncle in boring Illinois. Anything would be better than doing summer school on a computer while his scientist dad is stationed at the South Pole. Boring lives up to its name until Brian and his cousin Nora have a fight, get lost, and discover a huge wooden house in the forest. Soon they meet the madcap eccentric family that lives inside. To them, the house is not just a home, but a castle. With their new friends, Brian and Nora, tangled with giant wasps, sharp, tough swallow boars, and a crazed bureaucrat intent on bringing the dangerously dilapidated old house down with a wrecking ball. Summer just got a lot more exciting. <laughs> Sounds true. So excited for this one. The, wor the Best Worst Summer by Elizabeth Wilberg. This is going to be the worst summer ever for Peyton. Her family just moved and she had to leave her best friend behind. She's lonely, she's bored. Until she comes across a box buried in her backyard with a mysterious message. Things are about to get interesting. Back in 1989, it's going to be the best summer ever for Melissa and Jessica. They have two whole months to goof around and explore and they're even going to bury a time castle. But when one girl's family secret starts to unravel, it's clear things may not go exactly as planned. That sounds so good. I have three from Emma Carroll. Some of them, I don't know. I don't know if any of them say summer, but they just give me summer vibes. Secrets of a Sun King, Emma Carroll. It's like the desert, so. <laughs> London, 1922. A discovery from ancient Egypt, a cursed package, the untold story of a young pharaoh. When Lillian Kay finds a parcel on her granddad's doorstep, she is shocked to see who sent it. A famous e Egy Egyptologist found dead that very morning, according to every newspaper in England. The mysterious package holds the key to a story about a king whose tomb archaeologists are desperately hunting for. 
We want our friends must embark on an incredible journey to return the package to its resting place, to protect those they love, and to break the deadly Pharaoh's curse. I love what I read from her, and she's like the queen of historical fiction. The Somerset Tsunami. Somerset 1616. A, si a sinking boat, a girl in disguise, a disappearing sea. When Fortune Sharp carves a boat from a tree with her beloved brother Jim, she's only having a bit of fun. But now is not the time for a girl to be drawing attention to herself, and she is sent away to find work dressed as a boy. Luckily, a rich manor house is hiring. Yet Barrow Hall's inhabitants harbor dangerous secrets of their own. The suspicious owner is hunting for witches, and the house itself is a little too close to the sea. Her books just sound so good. Then letters from the lighthouse. Just lighthouse, sea. February 1941. A bomb blast. The chance encounter. Her mother's coat. This is all Olive can remember the night her sister Suhi went missing. With London unsafe, Olive and her brother evacuated to the Devonshire coast to stay with a mysterious lighthouse keeper. There, Olive must solve a mystery of her own, a strange coded note which seems to link Suki to Devon and to something dark and impossibly dangerous. I want to read all of those right now. Then the first book in The Great Peach Experiment, When Life Gives You Lemons, Make Peach Pie by Aaron Sonnenberg Downing. The second book just came out too, I think. And there's illustrations. Sweet summer has taken a rotten turn. After a tough year, Lucy, Freddie, and Herb Peach are ready for vacation. Lucy wants to read all of the books on the summer reading list. Freddie wants to work on his art projects when he isn't stuck in summer school. Herb wants to swim every day. Then their dad makes a big announcement. One of the inventions their mom came up with before she passed away is sold, and now they're millionaires. But dad has bigger plans than blowing the cash on fun stuff or saving it. He's bought a huge food truck. The peaches are going to spend their summer traveling the country selling pies. It will be the great peach experiment, a summer of bonding while living out one of mom's dreams. There's one issue dad's neglected, though. None of them knows how to bake. <laughs> that sounds so good. The Maloney's Magical Weather Box by Nigel Neil and Liz Maloney have a secret. Their father is the keeper of the weather box, a magical phone booth that rings four times a year, signaling the changing of the seasons. But one day when the family gathers to send off the sum summer, the phone doesn't ring and autumn doesn't arrive. Instead, a mysterious tourist of magic shows up at their doorstep, along with two nonsensical hags and one cat-shaped bog beef. The only one not taken by surprise is their neighbor, Mrs. Fitzgerald, who seems to be able to make the elements of weather itself do her bidding. Now it's up to Neil and Liz to discover the source of Mrs. Fitzgerald's power before all weather breaks loose. Sounds amazing. These are duologies, or there's only two out now. Camp Murderface, Josh Burke, and Sandra Mitchell. The second book is Doom in the Deep. Camp Sweetwater is finally reopening three decades after it mysteriously shut down. Camper Corin Quinn is there specifically to avoid watching her parents break up. Tess Jones's doctors have always told him to avoid excitement, but he's finally convinced them to let him give camp a try. So yeah, Corin and Tess are more than ready to take their summer at Sweetwater by storm. But before they can so much as toast one marshmallow, strange happenings start happening. Happenings like bugs pouring out of the floorboards, creepy faces screaming at them from the campfire, whirlpools dragging them down to the depths of the lake. Corn and Tez must face the facts. The legends surrounding Camp Sweetwater are horrifying, unbelievable, and worst of all, true. Can they survive the summer, or will Camp Sweetwater shut down for good this time with them inside? I'm like a good creepy, spooky middle grade summer story. And the Evolution of Calpurnia Tate by Jacqueline Kelly. I've had these forever, and I really want to read them. The second one, The Curious World of Calpurnia Tate. The summer of 1989 is hot in Calpurnia, a sleepy Texas town, and there's a lot of good ways to stay cool. Her mother has a new wind machine from town, but Kelly just might have to resort to stealthily cutting off her hair one sneaky inch at a time. She also spends a lot of time at the river with her notorious cantankerous grandfather, an avid naturalist. It turns out that every drop of river water is teeming with life, all you have to do is look through a microscope. As Kelly explores the natural world around her, she develops a close relationship with her grandfather and navigates the dangers of living with six brothers and learns just what it means to be a girl at the turn of the century. Sounds so great. In this trilogy, all four stars, Tara Derman. Stars of Summer. Stars so sweet. Wanted one anonymous restaurant critic. Gladys Gatsby has been cooking gourmet dishes since the age of seven. Now she's 11 after a creme brulee accident, just a small fire. Gladys is cut off from the kitchen and her allowance. She's devastated, but soon finds a way to pay her parents back when she's mistakenly contacted to write a restaurant review for one of the largest newspapers in the world. But in order to meet her deadline and keep her dream job, Gladys must cook her way into the heart of her arch arch enemy and sneak into the New York and sneak into New York City all while keeping her identity a secret. I love food in middle grade and it sounds good. Silver Sisters trilogy by Lila Howell. The Forget Me Not Summer. Brightest Stars of Summer. Silver Moon of Summer. Sisters Marigold, Zinnia, and Lily Silver can't wait for summer even though it's warm all year in LA. 12 year old Marigold, an inspiring actress, has boys on the brain and is hoping to become more than friends with her crush. 
Xenia, 11, having failed at trying to tame her unruly curls, has plenty of time on her hands during summer vacation and will most likely spend it in Marigold Shadow. Five-year-old Lily, whom everyone adores, is content to play with her beloved nanny all day. But when their parents announce they're sending these California girls to their Aunt Sunny's house on Cape Cod for several weeks, it's a complete disaster. They're forced to adjust to a much simpler way of life. No TV, no Wi-Fi, and worst of all, sharing a room. Could their summer get any more awful? While at first reluctant, Marigold, Xenia, and Lily are charmed by their warm-hearted and quirky Aunt Sunny, whose cheery attitude is contagious. Resolving to make most of their situation, the sisters decide to spice up this quiet town by organizing a local talent show. As they start to make friends, like Peter, the Red Sox, loving sailor boy with a knife for Marigold, and see the magic of the Cape, the summer becomes one of the first funs in plenty of sun, all while they learn how to band together as the strongest version of themselves they can be. Sisters. So excited for this. Alright y'all, that's it for this video. Did you find any that you want to read now? Have you read any of them? Did you like them? Did you not? Let me know in the comments. I'm hoping to get back to schedule because I want to stay busy. But I can't promise anything yet. Um, thanks for being patient. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to subscribe, I'd love that if you'd like to. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.